Welcome to a new session on artificial intelligence and entrepreneurship in practice. Today we'll focus on business models in the age of AI. And we could win uh, for this topic an awesome expert, Tobias Goodman. Tobias thrives to advance um, the world of innovation management as an assistant professor of product innovation at EBF Business School and is actually also an expert on corporate venturing. Tobias, great to have you today. Um, how are you? Where did we catch you actually today? Hi, Oli. Thanks for inviting me. I'm fine. I'm right now in Berkeley, California. I'm doing a, yeah, a visiting scholarship here at Berkeley, so I'm spending my summer in California. That's a nice way to do, and that's actually pretty dope to combine somehow your research on that um, and your business innovation on that with, uh, I don't know, fascinating areas like close to Silicon Valley. What fascinates you on the topic of AI and entrepreneurship? Yeah, so for me, what fascinated me on AI and entrepreneurship is like AI is pretty, pretty old. You know, I think it started back in the 60s where were people are actually researching it. And now we're actually seeing startups like taking on uh, AI and using it to solve a lot of problems. So entrepreneurship, especially here in the Silicon Valley, is thriving. And also now in Germany, where I usually live, uh, many startups now are very tech savvy and they're using AI uh, and it's getting kind of accessible to almost everyone because it's very easy to deploy and now we see actually startups using it and solving a lot of problems and that fascinates me. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about business models in the age of AI. Thanks is yours Tobias. Yeah, thank you. So Uli, you asked me like, to prepare a little talk on you know, giving the basics on you know, AI and entrepreneurship and you know, data-driven businesses. And for this, you know, I want to start off with a, with a short overview with a nice metrics. You know, business school professors, we always have two by twos, <laughs> which in this case uh, I used from PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, where they looked at, you know, what are maybe four easy ways uh, to become a data-driven business. And, uh, but before we start, you know, uh, data-driven businesses, what, what do they do? What are they? They combine external and internal data. They develop analytics around this data to actually kind of create insights to what a business model is, namely create and delivering value to customers. And this at the end, you know, turns out uh, for companies that they can make better decisions, they can improve business processes, they gain more customers, keep customers for longer, and of course, at the end, increase revenues and profits. And when we look at this metrics, I think this is quite easy to understand. I hope it's easy to understand. We look at the nature of data. So is it a single domain or multiple domain data? So does it only focus on you know, one area or more, more uh, areas of data? And you know, we have on the y-axis this kind of sophistication of insights. So low means it's just very easy, almost just aggregated data, while you know, high sophistication means there's a lot of, maybe a lot of AI kind of combining it to actually make data into or create data into actual insights. What we do now is we go into step by step all those four uh, segments of that matrix. When we look at you know selling insights right now, as you mentioned, uh, I'm in the U.S., um, so uh, there they have an interesting healthcare system, and Optum is part of the United Health Group. Uh, so they offer kind of primary care in the U.S., uh, which means it's a software that you know helps doctors and hospitals. And uh, their traditional revenue source is, you know, collecting claims of clinical data. Um, they have a huge database, you know, more than 250 million patients in kind of their health organizations. And usually they're selling this, this data. Now, of course, with AI, what can they do? They look at all this data of their, their patients. And what they can do is connecting with other data sources and so on. But, you know, they um, uh, can understand the cost the quality of the healthcare of the patients. They can actually give um, recommendations, you know, to to all the different uh, kind of healthcare ecosystem players. Yeah? So on how to uh, like treat the patient better, you know. Uh, also in terms of insurance, you know, they can pinpoint to billing fraud and so on. So overall, they're using a massive amounts of data about the patients in that healthcare ecosystem and selling insights to all those players in the ecosystem. So this is one example here from the US. Another example here is TomTom. I think that's, uh, I think it's still an old legacy company you might know. Um, they, um, what they do now is they, you know, generate new revenue streams through new offerings focused on data and insights. So back then, I think uh, 
especially the older listeners, you know, uh, they sometimes build those navigation devices in the car. Hmm? Uh, what are they doing now? Nobody <laughs> usually buys new navigation devices. We all have your know, Google Maps or Apple Maps. But uh, how can they still like, kind of become a, a valid player is they're using kind of the large volume of the GPS data uh, of all the different devices uh, out there. And they help, for example, business and traffic matches of cities uh, or smart cities in this case, to actually make the right traffic management decisions. So how do you plan a traffic lights and uh, how can you improve traffic flow and stuff like this. So it means becoming uh, or switching from a navigation device uh, um, seller or producer to actually becoming a trusted advisor on you know, how to improve traffic flow. Mm. So very interesting uh, change. Another one is um, selling raw data. That's maybe the third one. Uh, it's a DNB, a Dun and Bradstreet. I don't know if you're familiar with that company. Actually, this company was one of the first here in the U.S. that kind of set up a centralized credit reporting system. I think it was uh, in the late or mid 1800s. Um, so they gather a lot of data about you know uh, the firm registration, the business history, um, the financials, you know, and so on. And uh, what they do now is they're still selling all this data, but they're connecting it, of course. Uh, they're uh, scraping, crawling a lot of different data, and they sell it to banks, lending institutions, and so on, which then, of course, can use the data to make a uh, kind of decision on should I give or should I lend money to you as a person. Hmm? Well, this is maybe uh, one of the easiest ones uh, to, to, to explain. And last but not least, I think a company you're all familiar with is Spotify, a uh, music streaming service. What do they do as a kind of a data-driven business? They're using data to create additional value for their current products. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there's a Spotify uh, for artists, which means, uh, for example, if you are a music band and you have a concert, for example, in Germany or in the U.S., it might be that, you know, the the different people in the different countries or in different, different cities, they might listen to other songs. But with you don't know this. Uh, but now with Spotify, with all the listeners globally, you can actually know what are the songs played in different regions and you can, you can uh, adapt to it. Uh, so as a you know, user of Spotify, uh, uh, that's okay. But for bands now, uh, you can use these insights to actually uh, yeah, uh, adapt your playlist uh, around the globe. So you see uh, four different examples on you know, data-driven businesses. And uh, uh, i give you another example, which you're also familiar with, with Uber, you know, one of the uh, high-growth companies. And they bundle all of those four things uh, in, in one. And so you see, again, those four kind of things, you know, selling insights. For example, what do they do? Uh, Uber also, of course, has uh, the same capability. So they're using GPS data among different cities to measure impact of, you know, road improvements and so on. So this is almost the same uh, thing as the guys from TomTom do. Um, what do they do in terms of adding new products uh, here in the U.S. when we uh, want to have food? <laughs> what do we do? It's kind of we're using Uber Eats. I think in, uh, in the Europe, uh, there is Vault or there is Deliveroo and companies like that. So they're kind of adding new products to the service. They bundle also data. So for example, they partner with Spotify. So when you sit in a Uber and you're driving from A to B, you can actually use kind of your playlist and you can play it in the car of the Uber driver. And also they're selling raw data. Uh, what does it mean? So they're using data on the ratings, on the financials, on profiles of all the drivers and they build around an ecosystem that kind of uh, driver enhancing, uh, driver experience enhancing apps. Mm? Like for example, um, tracking the tax ownings of the driver um, or building kind of a repair reward system. So you see uh, there are many different options as a data-driven business or to become a data-driven business. And Uli asked me now to give you some, some hints or some, hin some insights about, you know, what should you do? How should you start? Huh? And I think you should ask at least uh, these six questions. So they are, so what do you need, need to consider actually to uh, kind of to become this data-driven business? And there are you know, strategic journeys, uh, strategic questions and tactical questions in terms of strategic ones, you know, what data assets uh, can create value is stuff like what data sources uh, and assets uh, could be monetized, um, what, you know, sources are required, uh, what are the limitations and so on. 
Next one is, you know, uh, why is data valuable? Um, what data is unique? Is it accurate? Is it uh, granular? Is it timely? Is it more insightful? And so on. What are the metrics? And so on. So there are many, many, many questions around why is data valuable? Uh, the next one, you know, how does it create value? Um, what value does it create? Um, does it help to solve problems? How does it increase decision making? And so on. So these are all the strategic questions. Of course, there are hundreds of questions we can ask. Uh, it also depends on your context. But then, of course, there are other tactical questions such, you know, what data rights are required? This is always a huge question everyone asks, you know, uh, what's about ownership? What's about sharing rights? Um, how does it kind of comply with all the privacy policies? In, you know, in, in Europe, we have GDPR and stuff like this. Um, so the geographical data policies and, and regulations. Then, of course, uh, for whom it's valuable? Um, kind of who are the current customers, who might be future customers, who actually need this, uh, suppliers and partners, which one do you need? And again, you know, how does it impact decision making? And last but not least, um, how do we capture the value? You know, um, what are the capabilities uh, that you need for it? Uh, do you need a, a different operating model for, for doing that? Uh, kind of how do you need to align your organizations? Uh, depending if you're you know, in a startup, it might be easier than your big corporate. And you know, also, do we have the right skills? Do we have the right talent to actually you know, do that, build stuff around the data? Have, do we have the right AI talent in this case? And I think when you ask or uh, find answers to those six questions, I think you're already on the right track on that data-driven business journey. And with this, I hope I gave you a good, small and short <laughs> kind of a basic introduction into data-driven businesses. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn, Twitter, or email. And now I'm also happy to chat with you, Oli. Uh, thanks, thanks so much, Toby. Uh, so that was pretty, pretty condensed, pretty straight, pretty you know, uh, methodology driven. So, uh, what would you recommend people out there, you know, for further reading, podcasts, resources, books? Right? Is there something you stumbled over and said like, hey, that's a must read for entrepreneurs of the future? So this is a, a must see, you know. Um, yeah. Podcast so for me, of course, video, as a professor, I'm kind of tending towards reading. <laughs> Sorry for that. So. Um, I think there are two or three books I recommend. Uh, the first one is, uh, I think someone uh, we always uh, need to like, give a lot of gratitude in the, the case of business models. You know, there's Alexander Osterwalder. He's the guy around uh, strategizer. I think if you look at uh, business models, he's one of the guy, you know, for example, who invented the business model, uh, the business model canvas. And uh, they uh, wrote a book called Business Model Generation, or the other one is called Value Proposition Design. Uh, designs are very well-crafted, uh, nicely designed books that I can recommend. Then a little more academic, but also very valuable, is uh, um, the guys from St. Gallen are very, very good in the whole topic around business models. So there's um, Oliver Gassmann and Caroline Frankenberger. Um, they wrote a book called Business Model um, Navigator. And actually, it is kind of uh, twofold. There is uh, 55 business model patterns. So really cool. If you have no clue about business model, I really recommend reading it because it's a collection of 55 different business models with a lot of examples. And they don't have just these pa patterns. They also have a book where they describe you know, the strategies of winning companies and their business models. And another resource maybe, which is online available, um, uh, can be checked out from the guys in Munich. They are called Orange Hills. And they uh, like describe something called business design, which is kind of closing the gap between the idea of, a, of, a, of your business and maybe the first revenue. And this journey they call business design, and they're open sourced kind of all of their knowledge base around, you know, how can you do that? Uh, and it's available on businessdesign.org, and they describe kind of a five-phase uh, process, you know, a setup phase, discovery phase, design, validation, and decision phase, where it's a, lot of a very rich resource. So if you have no clue, really, there's so much information about how do you do that? How do you get from your idea to kind of uh, the business model? And then, of course, to a scalable, sizable business. So this is something which I really recommend reading and diving into. So you can spend the whole weekend just reading that. Tobia, thanks so much for having the sharing um, this with us um, and greets uh, to California. Thank you. Catch you soon somewhere in the ocean.